Okay. Do you have pills for Sorry. us? Oh yeah, absolutely. Do we have what for you? A pill. Uh, right? <laughs> that would be awesome. For us? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Comic books and NZT. I know. <laughs> Is, will that do with comic books? Right? <laughs> what made Limitless the perfect material for our TV series? Well, we are we are picking up where the movie left off in many ways, and the movie created this kind of amazing universe and asked all these really complicated questions and left a lot of things very ambiguous at the end. And so our goal was to figure out how do we take this amazing work and both honor it by, as I said, picking up where it left off but giving it its own identity. Um, and some of that had to do with following a new character. Some of it had to do with inheriting a very pronounced style that felt like it defined what Limitless was from the movie, but also in our amazing director, Mark Webb, how do we take it to a new place? How do we give it its own identity visually? Um, so it, it set the stage for, I think, many seasons of, you know, really a fish out of water story, and that traditionally with a procedural, everybody who's there in a precinct is there because they went through school or training or the academy or whatever it is. This is a guy who is totally out of that. He never in a million years thought he was going to be an FBI agent. And so he's the guy, he's us, sort of on the outside looking in going, how did I get here? But when he's on that pill, he has the sort of mental capability of 20 agents combined. And so oddly, he's better than the rest of them. So it makes him extremely unique in his ability to do it. Um, then there's the bigger questions of what Eddie Moore really wants from him. Why did he plant him in the FBI and turn him into a mole, essentially? Is Eddie good? Is Eddie bad? So all of those questions are, are I think, very delicious and, and deep and will provide, hopefully, many seasons of the show. So does the pilot catch us up with the movie for people who haven't seen the movie? If you haven't seen the movie, you yeah. don't need to have seen it to watch the pilot. Because what Craig Sweeney did so brilliantly is, the, in his version, the movie exists and it happened, but this is a whole new story in the world of NZT yeah. and this drug. And so you, if you've seen the movie, great, but you, you definitely don't have to. Yeah, because there was talk of maybe a sequel for the movie, but this is not the contradict. No, it actually picks up where the movie left off. Yeah, Bradley is repeating his, his character anymore from the movie. So some of the things that we found out that happened at the end of the movie, we, we addressed in the pilot. So again, like Heather said, if you haven't seen the movie, it doesn't matter. If you have, you'll have sort of the extra benefit of, oh, wow, they, yeah, it's yeah. funny. You have Bradley as a guest star, but he has a very busy schedule. So can you tell how often he will pop up? You know, Bradley is a producer on the show, and we wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. And he's, he was very committed to it from the beginning. He wasn't just there to do his scene on the day. He, he helped us develop the ideas for the series, for the pilot, and he's very invested in the show. And so I think he wants to do as much of it as he can. So depending on how his film schedule works out, he'll, he'll find the time. We hope he'll find the time. What are, what are some of the most uh, difficult things in, in adapting the story and creating the new story? I, I mean, I know a, a large thing was, was, was very consciously not having our series be the Eddie Mora story, because I think the last thing you want to do, or at least the last thing we wanted to do, was make a TV show version of a movie that starred one of the biggest movies, now one of the biggest movie stars in the world, and whoever, whatever actor walked into that spot was going to be pretty tough. So again, paying homage to that movie. I also think what Mark Webb did so amazing is the movie is very dark in places, and there's a place for that, and we have elements of that, but what Webb and Craig really brought to it was a more of an accessible wish fulfillment side and a playfulness that I think lends a new tone to the series, because that was a big conversation too, like how can audiences come into this every week, and the importance of making Brian Finch really likable, and, and you want to root for him in a way that maybe you didn't root for Bradley's character as much in the movie, because the minute he's on the drug, he's you know playing the stock market and making money and having sex with all these women, and, and really Jake, his character, he just wants to save his dad. Is it difficult to find new ways to, to bring out the knowledge that, that he gains from the drug while making the show? I think that's the fun of it, actually. It's, it's challenging in that you want it to feel unique and special and different every time. 
but the fun of it is like, wow, what's the new power he's going to discover today, or what's he going to see in this new circumstance, you know, from this very, very odd point of view. Yeah. And also what's great is Brian Finch is so uniquely qualified to do this job because of the fact that he didn't have just one career. I mean, he bounced around in his life from thing to thing, tempted all these different things, had all these different experiences. And what NZT does is it, it allows you to tap into all of the experiences, the knowledge you've ever had. So he's going to be able to pull from stuff that he would have done in his life that most people probably haven't done all those different things in their lives. Will they show the mock of procedurals of having anyone working for parking car? Like, will there be a big bed, or how do you plan that? The answer is all of the above. Uh, Every episode has a beginning, middle, and an end. Our goal is to have you uh, be able to pick up the show at any point and not be lost. That being said, it's emotionally serialized in that the characters are carrying their experiences episode to episode, and they're growing from them, and they're changing because of them. And then the big question about what Eddie Morrow wants from Brian is a huge serialized question, and that's something that's going to play out over time. Because obviously he embedded him in the FBI for a reason. And we don't know if he's good and we don't know if he's bad. So we're going to take time to answer that. And the other question that will be a big emotional drive is for Jennifer Carpenter's character, Rebecca. What happened to her father and how was he involved with NZT? And I think that's going to invest her with Brian a lot more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One more question, guys. Do you guys have sort of a visual way of showing when, when the drug is yes. taking effect? Yes, yes. Well, the movie did a remarkable job of doing that. But, uh, you haven't seen the pilot? Uh, no. Okay. So Mark Webb, <coughs> I think, paid homage to it totally, but really did come up with his own new way of, of it, kind of inventing, it, reinventing the style. So the world changes, like, uh, simple things, like when, when Brian was in his normal life, uh, Mark would shoot handheld. So there was a sense of shakiness to it, a sense that everything was a little bit off kilter. And the minute he would take the drug, everything was on a dolly or sticks. Everything was very smooth. Uh, so you, you don't realize it, but subliminally you're starting to change when he's starting to change. The other thing was color, the use of color. Everything's a little bit desaturated in his normal life, but when he's on the drug, everything is very heightened. So everything is, seems more colorful, more radiant, you can see more things. Um, there's a lot of graphics that we use to, to show his, you know, there's a, there's a scene, for example, where he's being chased through the park. And as he's running through the park, everything stops, and three trajectories paint themselves in front of him. He realizes if I go left, I'm going to get hit by a car. If I go straight, I'm going to get tagged by a cop. If I go right, I can go to the train tunnel and, and, and I'll get away. And you see him make that calculation through graphics and through a very stylized approach. So uh, those kinds of things we're going to do every episode. Sure. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.